Vic, is the new public interest defence better for the journalist or the person who feels aggrieved? In my view, at first blush, it seems like it is better for the journalist, but in reality, I don't think that there's really any difference. The Russell Heston case is the decision is down. What's your take on that in relation to the public interest defence that they ran? What's transpired is, you know, the revelation that it's not going to give the media the level of protection that a I expect the media had hoped for um, and, you know, that the legislature was was essentially angling to provide. So the protections aren't there and, and it's quite clear that Justice Lee, you know, turned his mind very, very carefully to the various elements of the defence. Um, he's provided some really good guidance around those elements, but also demonstrated that the court may take into account various criteria and will take into account various criteria to assess whether or not those individual elements are proved. A lot of it swings on this term reasonableness, doesn't it? That's right. So what is reasonable? It's effectively a bit of a subjective test um, to consider whether or not, and it's a, it's, a, it's a value judgment effectively, as to whether or not the steps taken were reasonable. And Section 29A, subsection 2, actually lists a number of different criteria that the court may, rather than must, take into account in assessing that reasonability. Some of those elements are key and they're not new, they're not fresh to defamation law, and they involve considerations of things like the seriousness of the imputations published, um, whether or not there was any degree of urgency in publishing the matter, whether or not the um, steps taken to verify the information were fulsome, carefully executed and the like, whether or not the individual, in this case Russell Heston, was contacted in that case, Lee gave the journalists a fail on this one. Uh, yes, yes, in many respects. Not in all, but in, in many respects, yes. The next one is Al Madeiras, the bone surgeon, um, which is also public interest offence, which is current. How's that? What, what are going to be the key features then in that? What the publishers are going to need to demonstrate there is that the matter does concern the publications in question do concern an issue of public interest which I think will be readily satisfied and um, it's not quite clear to me yet whether or not that's been conceded but I expect it would in the case of Al, Al, Al Madeiras. Whether or not they also believe that the publication was in the matter of public interest so it's a slight nuance so concerning a public interest matter, whether or not they believed it, and then thirdly, whether that belief was reasonable. And that's where I think the defendants are going to have a lot of work in demonstrating the reasonability of that belief having regard to their various investigations and interviews with, with um, people, you know, sources, um, what steps they took to investigate the integrity of those sources and the information being provided. So from a journalist point of view, it sounds like this new legislation is a bit of a lame duck. That's right. I, I, I would suggest it is. It is a major step to excuse from liability a defamatory publication, which has caused or is likely to cause serious harm to an individual's reputation when it's shown not to be substantially true. But at the end of the day, Section 29A still does require that reasonability and that needs to be demonstrated in order to make good the defence. And so if, if a journalist cannot demonstrate that reasonability and satisfy a court, it, it is a lame duck. It's not really going to make a much of a difference at all. Politicians and people who've got high profiles, who've got an absolute capacity to defend themselves in public, it seems reasonable that a journalist should be able to raise an allegation if it's genuine, a genuine allegation. An example might be the Christian Porter case where a serious allegation was raised and the, the concept is that um, Porter had the ability to defend himself. 
and so a journalist should be able to raise that allegation given the capacity of the person to defend himself don't do you agree with that concept yes although we all know that there is a bit of a trial by media and that readers of publications will form views based on what they read and the nature and the level of information set out in a publication so if the publication is devoid of you know any side of the story of the, the person the politician for instance in your example it harm can be caused by the imputations that are carried without any say from the person the subject of the allegations and that sits there pending that individual having a right of recourse or taking steps to seek the vindication and put their side forth so right. it is so is this new legislation a bit of a white elephant and that it doesn't hasn't moved the dial much at all my view peter is that it is a bit of a white elephant it's moved it very slightly in that it does give an opportunity to journalists, to publishers, to be absolved of liability, even if it's ultimately proven, you know, that the allegation is not true, so long as they've acted, you know, satisfied the three elements of the defence. But at the end of the day, it's it's only moved the dial very slightly by virtue of the fact that journalists still do need to follow their ethical duties and ensure that what they are being published is reasonable um, in all the circumstances. Vic, as always, interesting, complex this time, but thank you very much. Thanks very much, Peter.